I did come to shake you up today. I did come to wake you up today because I really believe I'm on an assignment to speak to you, Gateway, today and remind you of a calling that maybe you have forgotten you have. I love this house. I honor the leadership of this house. This is a platform that has so much legacy and so much incredible fruit and harvest that's come from this house. And I know at the core of this house, what I'm about to speak into you is the message that's made that legacy possible. And today I want to remind you as a, as a person that's in this house, in this family, of your call of your assignment because maybe you have forgotten that you have a part to play in the kingdom of God. Maybe you've forgotten that you are essential in the, in the grand work that God is doing on the earth right now. Maybe you think it's a few people with microphones that get to do the thing that God has called them to do. But I'm here to let you know every single one of you are fully employed in the kingdom of God and you have a job to do and you have work to do. And I want to remind you today that you are a seeker. You are a seeker. I want to speak to you about your call to be a seeker. I think we hear that word in the church used a lot, the word of being a seeker. And as soon as we hear it, I think a lot of us automatically think of those who don't know Jesus. They must be seeking because they've not yet found Jesus. But I want to let you know that if you have found Jesus today, you still are a seeker. There is so much more of Him you're supposed to be discovering. There's so much more of Him for you to understand and for you to enjoy and for you to be part of. And, and if we stop reminding ourselves we are seekers, then we stop going on the pursuit of finding out everything there is to know about this God that puts the very breath in your lungs today. There is more to discover. And if you think I know it all, I have news for you. I'm sorry, but you do not. There is more for you to discover. When the disciples were in their boat and Jesus walks by their life, He says two words, follow me. That's all He says. He doesn't say where to. He doesn't say this is what's going to happen. He doesn't say this is where we're going to eat. This is where we're going to sleep. He doesn't give them any other explanation. But the power of two words had such a pull on these men's lives that they left everything they knew because there was something about him that was irresistible. It was like a magnet that was drawing them to follow him and seek after him. And the root word, the word disciple, the root word means to be a student. That day, they became a student of the one who had the answers. They became a student of the one who could show them the way. They became a student of his words and of his ways. And we, if we are disciples, are called to the same posture, to be the posture of a student, to be the posture of someone who is seeking him. And I'm here to tell you that today, maybe you've got back in your boat. Maybe you, 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 you followed him when you really needed him, but now you kind of got your life tidy, got your boat in order, got your fishing nets in the water. You're like, I'm good. I got this. I found Jesus. And now I'm going to go back to my boat and do life. No, you were called to be a seeker, which means you constantly are in this journey of learning and growing. The Bible says in James 4 verse 8, if you draw near to Him, He will draw near to you. How many of us think it's the other way around? <laughs> like, okay, God, if you could just draw near to me and my boat, that would be amazing. No, the idea is that there's something inside you that wants to follow and pursue Him. And in that heart of pursuing Him, you will find Him. I think maybe we have so much information at our fingertips that we have stopped seeking revelation. We have so many opinions that we've stopped seeking the truth. We're so immersed in our culture, we've stopped seeking the kingdom. We have so much excess that we have stopped seeking less. And I want us to get back to the role of seeking because here's the thing. If you're not seeking, the probability is that you're probably hiding. What's the very first thing that happened when sin entered the garden? Here are Adam and Eve 
who are seeking to be in the presence of God, seeking to walk with Him in the cool of the day, seeking to have conversations, seeking to be in His presence, sin enters. And the first thing they do as a consequence of sin is they begin to hide from the one who they moments before that were seeking. They begin to hide themselves, hide even what they are by themselves, by what they're wearing, hide their own flesh from him, hide their own being from him. And what does God do? He comes seeking them to remind them, this is not my plan for you. I didn't plan for you to hide. I plan for you to seek me. I plan for when you seek me, for you to find me. And I believe the enemy wants you hiding. He wants you to forget that you're a seeker. He wants you hiding behind your schedule, hiding behind your title, hiding behind your wealth, hiding behind your relationships, hiding behind your shame, hiding behind your failure. He wants you to be hiding because he knows when you stop seeking, you will find When you seek Him, you'll find freedom. When you seek Him, you'll find forgiveness. When you seek Him, you'll find breakthrough. That's why He wants you hiding. And I need to remind you, like Proverbs 8 tells us, if you seek Him, you will find Him. It is a guarantee. I remember years ago when my children were little, one of their favorite games was hide and seek. Now here's a little bit of free parenting advice in the middle of my message today, okay? Hide and seek, for all you parents, is a great idea. What is there not to love about this game? Number one, your children hide. Number two, they're quiet while they're hiding. And number three, it's free. This is a great game for parenting. And so we played it a lot in our home. And so I remember on this one occasion, our two children going off and hiding, and I was the seeker. And so I began seeking. My daughter was always easier to find than my son, who was really good at this game. And so after a little while, I find hope. And I find my daughter hope. And then after I found my daughter hope, my cell phone rings. So I answer my phone, and it's kind of a deep conversation I'm having with a friend, and we're getting really into a deep conversation, and we're talking, and so we're in the conversation. I hang up the phone, and as I hang up the phone, the laundry begins to sing to let me know it's done. So now I go to the laundry room, and I'm doing the laundry, and I'm moving things into the dryer, and then I'm putting the next loading. 40 minutes later, I realize, oh my word, I am playing hide and seek, and I only found one child. And so I suddenly get back to the job of seeking and I eventually find our son Noah has hidden himself underneath his bed and because he has been waiting for so long to be found, he is fast asleep. (laughs) And when I was thinking about bringing this message to you today, I was reminded of that moment with my son. And I want to say to you by the Spirit of God, there are some things to do with your future and your breakthrough and your destiny. And they've fallen asleep. It's not that they're not in the house. They are in the house. But you've stopped seeking them. You've stopped seeking a better marriage. You've stopped seeking a breakthrough. You've stopped seeking freedom. It's not that God's withholding it from you, but you've got to go seek. And if you seek, you will find. And there's some things you just need to wake up for your future. So I want to take you to a story in the Bible that is a very familiar story. But I want you to look at it with fresh eyes today because this is the story of someone that was seeking and the seeking of this man changed his life. This man, because he decided to seek, went from being hidden to being found, from being confused to being clear, from being isolated to being included, from being a fraud to being a follower. And his name was Zacchaeus. And his story is in Luke 19. If you've been around church for any length of time, you will have heard this story, maybe made the little cutouts of the man and the tree. But I want us to look a little deeper today. I want us to examine actually what it was that he chose to do because it was in his choosing to seek that everything changed. Luke 19 tells us in verse 1, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Note that Jesus is passing through Jericho. He's not planning to stop in Jericho. He's not having an overnight 
couple of days stay at the New Westin in Jericho. He is not planning to camp out there. He is passing through. So as Jesus is entering to pass through, it says there was a man there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. The Bible is letting us know this man had what many people spend their life seeking. He had wealth. He had position. He had influence. He had title. And yet we find this man is still not satisfied. This man is still feeling unfulfilled. And maybe that sounds familiar because you have title. You have wealth. You have the things the world says you need to feel fulfilled, but there's an emptiness that nothing seems to touch. That's because there's something you still need to seek. And so Zacchaeus hears that he is passing through, and it says this in verse 3. He decided that he wanted to see who Jesus was. I want to urge you today that if you are going to be a seeker, you've got to seek to seek. I want to ask you the question, what are you seeking to see? What is it that you're like, I want to see with my own eyes. I want to see. See, a lot of us live our Christian life listening to other people's testimonies of what they see. And I don't want to live my life listening to someone else tell a testimony of their breakthrough. I want to see my own breakthrough. I don't want to listen to the testimony all the time of someone else's prodigal coming home. I want my prodigal to come home. I don't want to listen all the time to the testimony of everyone else's healing. I'm glad for it, but I want to see my own healing. There's a curiosity and a desperation that I believe the church across the globe has got to get back. Well, I have seen it. Done it, got the t-shirt, got the church merch. <laughs> Literally got the t-shirt. I, I don't hear as often, I'm just desperate to see. I don't know how you came in the room today, but did you come in desperate? I'm desperate to see him move. I'm desperate to see him do a miracle in my marriage. I'm desperate to sense him, to see him, to see him in the word. Because when you come seeking to see, everything changes. And I think we've lost our curiosity in our Western world. We've lost our desperation. We can even just flick channels and maybe hope that we see something that remotely is like Jesus. But he was curious. He was like, I know I can hear tomorrow about Jesus, but I want to see. I think he wanted to see how tall this guy was. I think he wanted to see how cool his shoe game was. Like, I want to see with my own eyes what this Jesus that everyone's making a fuss about. I want to see what he looks like, how he interacts with the people. You can't capture that unless you're in the room. You can't capture that unless you're part of the crowd that gets to go see. And if you are watching online today, I love y'all, but there's something about just sitting in our recliner sometimes and going, I got online going on. No, there's something about being in the room. There's something about seeing with your own eyes. Something about being around the people of God. Are you desperate to see? And something happened in this man, and he's like, I want to seek, I want to see Jesus, but then comes the but. I want to see Jesus, but because he was short, and all the short people said, the Bible understands us all. (laughs) Literally. Short people issues, we got you. Zacchaeus says, I really want to see, but... I'm sure, and there's a crowd. And when you get curious enough to want to see him with your own eyes, your excuse will show up. I want to see, but I don't know that I fit in. I want to see, but I kind of got used to being online. I want to see, but I kind of don't want to be seen. I want to see, but I really messed up last week, so I'm not sure I qualify. Your excuse will always show up right at the side of your curiosity because the enemy does not want you to get desperate enough to go see. 
And I don't know what's getting in the way of you seeing God move in your life, of you seeing Him move in your finances, in your marriage. I don't know what it is. Your excuse of I'm too busy, or I can't, or it didn't work, or I'm disappointed, or I failed. But you gotta get past your excuse if you wanna see. You see, some of you are living in proximity to your problem, and you wanna see your promise. And I'm like, your promise is not gonna come and do a home visit. You're gonna have to move from the proximity of your problem. See, Zacchaeus could have stayed at home and gone, you know what, I'm rich, I'm influential. Jesus needs to do me a home visit. It's not a lot to ask. It's passing through. I'm in the neighborhood. He needs to come to my house. We need to, we need to have a home visit situation. A lot of us are waiting for our breakthrough, but we want it as a home visit. We don't want it to be out in the public. We don't want to have a discussion that anyone else might see. And so we're waiting for it to come to our house. But just like the woman with the issue of blood who had to drag herself to Jesus, just like Zacchaeus who had to get past his excuse, there's a desperation that has to get you over the things that have kept you stuck for so long. You're living in proximity to your pain, but you want freedom. You gotta move the proximity of your life towards the one who has the answers for your life. You have to move the proximity of your confession over your excuse towards the one who can change your confession. And so Zacchaeus realizes, I want to see, but I'm short. And so it says this, so he decided, I'm not gonna let that get in the way anymore. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him. It's time for some of you to climb a tree. I don't know what your tree is, but you need to climb a tree so you can get a different perspective. Stop sitting in the problem and expecting to see the answer. You gotta climb out of the problem and get to a higher perspective so you can see the one who has the answer. Stop sitting in the betrayal and the pain of it and then expecting to find freedom in the pain of it when freedom is over here. You have to climb the tree and believe and start to see. Seekers seek to see. And so Zacchaeus, he climbs the tree and this is why it's important that you begin to climb the tree, that you change your proximity, that you get to higher ground because it says as he climbs the tree, it suddenly says this, it says when Jesus reached the spot. What spot? A moment ago he was passing through, but now he's reached the spot. What spot has he reached? He's reached the spot where he knows someone is trying to see me. I don't think Jesus had a security team. Okay, Jesus, third tree down on the right. Wealthy man, wealthy man up tree. We could do with a good offering right about now. Let's get the man out of the tree. This would be good for the ministry. So right about here, if you could stop. No, there was none of that going on. There was no manipulation. There was no somebody trying to manufacture a moment. Jesus knew there's a crowd, but someone is seeking. There's a sea of people, but someone is trying to see. And Jesus stops at the spot. And it says, he looks up. And then he says these words, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Wait a minute. Jesus knows his name. Why is it important that Jesus calls him by name? I'll tell you why. Because the name Zacchaeus means pure and innocent one. Zacchaeus is living a life that is anything but pure and innocent. He is stealing from people. He is overtaxing people. He is lying to people. He is deceiving his community. He is despised by people in his neighborhood. This man was not pure. This man was not innocent. But when you seek to see him, he sees who you are because he knows who he made in God's image. He knows who you are. 
so he's calling to Zacchaeus, I see you just as you're seeking to see me. As you seek to see me, you will truly see you. This is who you are. This is who you are in him. This is who you're created to be. That is not your identity, your badge, your title, your wealth. That's not who you are. This is who you are. And if you want to truly discover who you are, you've got to seek to see the one who knows more than anyone who he created you to be. Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Because after you seek to see, there's something else you must do. You have to seek to stay. And we don't like this one. You're like, Charlotte, if you could just move on to the last point, that would be amazing. Because we're going to get a little uncomfortable in the room right now. Because Jesus says to him, I need you to come down. Why? Because I must stay at your house today. Jesus is like, I'm glad you're seeking to see me. But actually, if you really want to seek me, you're going to have to seek to stay. You're going to have to leave the treetop and come to the tabletop. <laughs> See, you don't really know someone till you stay. All you people that recently got married, you should be giving me a good amen right about now. Right? Like, like, like when you were dating... When you were like engaged, like, like you didn't know that Prince Charming can sometimes be Shrek. <laughs> you didn't know that until you stay. And as you stay, you start to figure out more things because you're staying. And a lot of us are dating Jesus, putting on our weekend best for services. Showing up with our Christian self all put together. Hi, Jesus. Do you see I'm here in the room? I'm here today, so you know, here for another date. And Jesus is like, yeah, I see you, but I also see you on Monday. I see you on Tuesday when your attitude is not great. See, on Wednesday, when you're speaking in a way that you won't want anyone to know that you speak on Sunday, I, I see you on Thursday when you've lost your patience. I see you on Friday when you're doubting and questioning. I need you to come down, Zacchaeus, because if you really want to see me, you're going to have to stay. I want to say to some of you, it's time to come down from the tree. You got comfortable in the tree. You got a perspective and you like to see, but you don't want to stay. Every weekend when you're in services, someone will say, hey, we'd love to connect. Fill out a connect card, come to the connect station, and you nod your head, and you take a card, and then you go out the door and you drop it right back in your bag. She's like, I don't think so. I don't need nobody knowing my name. Like, I, I don't want anyone calling me. Uh, and, and you'll hear people say, hey, get connected, join a group, come serve a kids ministry. You're like, yeah, that sounds amazing. No, because <laughs> that means I have to stay. And it gets awkward when I stay because I can't keep up my appearance for longer than a few hours at the weekend. And if I stay, you're going to actually get to know me and I'm not sure you're going to like the real me. And Jesus is saying to Zacchaeus, I want to stay at your house today. I want to stay past the awkward. Some of you relational world is a disaster. And I'm telling you why, because you won't stay. When it gets awkward, you get up from the table. When it gets awkward, you drive off. When it gets awkward, you change the conversation. When it gets awkward, you're like, ah, I'm out of here because you don't want to stay. But it's only when you stay that you actually begin to build something that lasts. It's only when you stay that you get a testimony for generation to generation. It's only when you stay that you build a legacy that helps people move their life to the next level. We need people that don't just seek to see, but seek to stay. I've been in the same church all my life. I've tried to leave several times, but God has not allowed it. Why? Because he knows I need to stay. I remember... 
a while ago, I'm not embarrassed to tell you, that every now and again, we still play hide and seek. My daughter is 20, my son is 17. We have friends who we've been friends with for 37 years. Their children are in their late 20s. And every now and again, we'll say, let's play hide and seek. On this one occasion, we were at our friend's house, all our adult kids, and we played hide and seek. And I was hiding. I'm very good. And I knew the cupboard in my friend's house where all the junk goes. So I went to that cupboard. And I got in that cupboard. And I didn't just get in the cupboard. I got in the cupboard and put everything on top of me like the ski boots, the jackets, the bags, the satchels, like I was, I was hidden well. She opened those cupboard doors at, not once, not twice, four times. Opened the cupboard doors, searching, seeking, closed them, no, not in there, came back, opened, closed them, nope, not in there. But if she just stayed, she would have seen things moving in the cupboard that should not move by themselves. She would have heard, because I was dying underneath that stuff. She'd have just stayed. She would have found what she was looking for. And I want to say to some of you today, if you just stay, you're going to find what you're looking for. If you just stay, you're going to find what you're looking for relationally. You're going to find what you're looking for in that discipleship area. You're going to find the breakthrough that you're looking for. Stop running around town and stay planted in the house. You will flourish. Stay. (laughs) Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. We were recently in Rome with our children. And you know, the fascinating thing is you walk down the streets of Rome and it feels like on every side of the road, on on every street, there seems to be these cordoned off areas. And they're taped off to let you know, don't walk here because we're doing a dig. There's something underneath the ground here that, that we believe there's treasure. But right across the street, there is the tourist shop. And I feel like it's the same in our walk with God. It's like there's this draw often and we're like, I want, I want treasure, but I don't want to give it the time. So I'm just going to go to the shop and buy a trinket. I think it's time for us as believers to get back to the site of digging and stop purchasing the trinket. Just because you wear the church merch doesn't mean you believe what's written on the shirt. Hello? Just because you listen to the podcast doesn't mean you have the revelation that's going to help you get freedom. We've got to stop picking up trinkets and start digging for treasure. Stop picking up a trinket of a, of a magnet of the Word of God, sticking it on your refrigerator, and then wondering why it's not helping you. It's not helping you because it's a magnet. <laughs> it can only help you when it's revelation that you've dug for time to stay. Some of you need to fill in the connect card. Some of you need to go and say, hey, I want to I wanna sign up and get involved. I want to serve. I want to stay. Because when you stay, the final thing happens. You start to stand. It says this. It says that he comes down and he goes to his home, he takes Jesus and he stays at the table. And I can only imagine the conversations as their eyes lock at the table and the things that we'll talk about. And the more he's in the presence of Jesus, the more something about Zacchaeus begins to change. And in verse eight, it says, all of a sudden, voluntarily, no one telling him to, Zacchaeus stood up and he said, Lord, look, Here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. What's happening? The more he stays in the presence of Jesus, the more the real Zacchaeus begins to stand up. He's like, that is not who I am. I'm not a cheat. I'm not a liar. I'm not a fraud. There's a good man inside of me. I want to give. I don't want to take from everyone. I want to contribute. I want to be part of the answer. And something inside him begins to stand. And I'm telling you, when you get around Jesus and you start seeking Him with all your heart, when you start staying and digging deeper so that you know Him in a way you've never known Him before, something about you begins to stand. You begin to stand in your workplace. 
You begin to stand in your community. You begin to stand on the Word of God in your family. You begin to stand in the gap for your children. You begin to stand. Next Sunday, I don't think it's a coincidence. It's Baptism Sunday. What's baptism? It's you taking a stand. It's you're like, I'm not hiding this. I'm putting the old Zacchaeus in the water and the new Zacchaeus will stand up with that water running off his head and say to the people watching, I stand because I'm not the old guy. I am the new guy that Christ made me to be. Baptism is you standing. Some of you are like, oh, I'm not really sure. Why? What is that? What is there to be sure about? Did He save you? Does He love you? Has He forgiven you? Has He put the breath in your lungs today? Has He got a plan for you? Has He got a purpose for you? Why would you not stand for Him? And Zacchaeus is like, I don't know this man, but I sought to see him and I saw me. I didn't know this man, but I sought to stay at a table with him and something began to change within me. I didn't know this man, but by being around him, something inside me began to stand up. It is time for the church to get back to seeking. It's time for us to become true seekers of His Word, true seekers of His presence. Seek first the kingdom and all of that stuff that the world are seeking will be added unto you. It's time to seek His face. Seek His will. Seek His ways. And at the end of this story, it ends with this statement. As Jesus looks at Zacchaeus, and in verse 10 says this, for the Son of Man came to what? To seek and save the lost. If your heavenly Father in His very DNA is a seeker, then surely as His child, you should have the same DNA on the inside of you that the one that created you is a seeker, which means his DNA is on the inside of you. And some of you, your life is stuck because you stop seeking. Your life is flat because you stop seeking. Your life, dare I say it? Yes, I will. Is boring. Because you stop seeking. It's never dull when you're seeking. It's never dull when you're chasing and pursuing the one who has everything that you could ever need. It's never, ever a day that's like the day before when you're seeking the one who every day has new mercies for you, new grace for you. And so today, Gateway, I'm asking where are the seekers? I'm gonna ask every single one of you to stand to your feet. Time's gone. You might say, well, this is a little challenging. Yes, it is. Well, you know, I, I, I kind of was in my recliner. I feel you ejected me. Yes, that's what God does. But I'm telling you, it's time for some of you to get back to seeking. And all across the room, I'm just asking as I close today, just close your eyes. I'm just asking, where do you need to get back to seeking? Some of you need to go back to discipling and discipleship groups. Some of you need to connect. Some of you need to plug in. Some of you need to serve. Some of you need to start giving, contributing. I don't know what it looks like. Get baptized. I don't know what it looks like, but there's something about this that's grabbed a hold of you today and you have to respond. So all across the house today, if you're saying, I know I need to get back to seeking, just as everyone's eyes are closed, just lift your hands. I wanna pray for you in that moment. I'm just saying, God, I, I know I'm a seeker. I know that's what you call me to be, but there's been things that have gone in the way. There's been excuses that have got in the way. There's been situations that have got in the way. But today, God, I'm reminded if I'm not seeking, I'm hiding and I don't want to hide. God, you see every hand that is raised right now. God, you see the posture of their heart. You see the willingness of their heart. Just like you saw it in Zacchaeus. And as he sought to see you, you saw him. You stayed with him. You helped Him stand. And today in this house, I pray there would be a revival of seeking. I pray that every sleeper would become a seeker. I pray every apathetic believer would get back to the job of pursuing you with all their heart, with all their mind. 
and with all their soul, I pray for fresh passion in the house to seek after your ways and your will and your purpose. Oh God, forgive us for where we've just come simply to be around things, but not seeking to see things. God, forgive us where we thought we know it all. When God, we know so little. Oh God, help us. No matter how old or young we are in this journey, I pray today it will be like a fresh commitment all over again in the house to seek your face, to seek your ways, to seek your word. As eyes are closed all across the house today, just lower your hands. I'm gonna ask one final thing. Where are you, Zacchaeus? Where is the one that, that has to yet seek Him as Lord? Where is the one that has to seek Him as Saviour? Where are you, prodigal? Living a life that is hiding from Him. It's time to come home. It's time to stop chasing and stop pursuing things that will never fulfill you and start seeking the one who knows you better than you know yourself. Where are you, Zacchaeus? Where are you, prodigal? As eyes are closed, if you're saying that's me today, I need to get my heart right with God. I need to ask for forgiveness. I need a fresh start. I need a new beginning. I need a Savior. I need Him to be Lord. I need Him to take over. If that's you today, I would simply, as eyes are closed, just lift your hand, saying, that's me today. I, I need this moment. I came in here and I didn't know this was gonna happen, but I know that I know that God is speaking right now to my own heart. And your hand is just like Zacchaeus climbing a tree. It's you saying, this hand is me climbing a tree. It's me pushing past my excuse. It's me saying today, don't pass me by. I need forgiveness. I need a new beginning. So many hands, just as those hands are raised all across the house today. Just put your hand on your heart. It's my greatest privilege and honor to get to pray over you in this moment. God, for every single person right now that's put their hand on their heart, God, you see them just like you saw Zacchaeus. You call them just like you called him. And God, I thank you today for those that are pushing past the awkward. And I thank you today for those who are moving the proximity of their life towards you. So God, in this moment, as each heart surrenders, as each life bows its knee. Today, God, I pray forgiveness for every single one, fresh beginning for every single one. I pray today a beginning of a transformation that will change them beyond all recognition. I pray today for them to find the one who made them and knows them better than they know themselves. Today, I pray for fresh hope, fresh faith, fresh forgiveness in the house. God, salvation and transformation in the house today. Thank you, Jesus. You save our souls, that you came to seek and save the lost. And today I thank you for every lost one that is coming home in your name. All the church said, amen and amen. Love you, church.